What is going on everybody? Tactop Airsoft back with a, another video. You know what they say, when it rains, it pours. And sadly, I have lost my SD card reader and I can't find the SD card that was in it that had the footage from uh, this weekend's play. We did uh, Ratageddon, which is the anniversary for rats. So I'm sorry I couldn't get my gameplay. Honestly, we just ended up fighting everybody most of the time, so it was just a normal open play. But if you want to see some cool gameplay with a chainsaw, go look for Rabbit's video. I will link it in the description. It is his POV. He was a character uh, straight out of um, Dead by Daylight. He had a chainsaw. You couldn't kill him. You just had to run from him. And if he caught you, you got the chainsaw. So very exciting gameplay to see there. Uh, so for this. I don't want to leave you hanging this week with no video, uh, especially going into next week where uh, this weekend we'll be at Cape Fear Rebellion and it might take me a second to edit that footage. So we're going to do a little bit of a tier list video today. Uh, I will rank all the brands that I know about and give you my opinions on them to help keep you more informed when making your next purchase. And if you disagree with what I say, leave a comment in the description. Let me know why you like the brand or don't like the brand. Uh, once again, this is just my opinion and yeah, let's get onwards with the tier list. Actually, before we get on with the tier list, let's thank our channel members. <laughs> at the five month mark, we have Trang Dai Bui. At the four month mark, we have The Weekend Shooter. At the three month mark, we have Big Rod. At the one month mark, we have Mark Mitchell. Also at the one month mark, we have Tadpole Actual. And our newest recruit, Trish Tenesson. Thank you for helping me with your name in the comments below. Uh, let me know if I got the pronunciation better this time. And yeah, let's get onwards with the video. So right off the bat, we have 6mm Pro Shop. Uh, it's a brand that I used way back in the day. I haven't really used it recently, but I think this brand deserves to go into the C tier. Uh, why do I think that? I think that they are a good... Uh, beginner brand they have some lower end AEGs and whatnot and they have some cool Barrett's that people like to pick up uh, but I don't think it's at the top of the game uh, and for the price uh, I think it gets a solid C tier next up we have A and K uh, I use them for their M249 um, haven't used it stock uh, but I think they have some pretty decently built replicas uh when you're getting a saw a and k and uh cyber gun are kind of your two go-to's there uh so for that i will throw it in b tier for now it may drop a little bit uh adaptive armament i am unfamiliar with this brand amg i've heard terrible things about it i haven't personally used amg um but from what i've heard I think a solid D tier is good for them. Uh, Apex Airsoft, again, unfamiliar with this brand. Uh, now we go into APS. I would love to put this brand higher. Uh, they make some cool like shell ejecting shotguns and things like that. They have a lot of experimental stuff, but they haven't perfected it. Like the Cam 870 uh, and their Street Sweeper. Um, both really cool concepts. They just haven't nailed the consistency with them yet. Uh, for cool factor and collectors, I would put it C, but for usability, I'll put it D. We'll see how flooded C and D get, and I may move it, but for now, I'm gonna put it at D. Uh, Arcturus, a brand that I actually love. I'm gonna put this at A tier. I think Arcturus is a great A tier brand. They have a lot of cool AKs. They are in like innovative in their designs. They make some cool concepts like their cat series. Um, they give you so much stuff out of the box. Uh, most Arcturus guns that I've bought uh, come with like two mags, patches, attachments like grips. Uh, the, the PP-19 came with a flared magwell and a um what's it called forward grip in rail segments uh and the performance is like pretty good like they have uh they partnered with Perrin for the uh limited edition series of the pp19 and then they took that design and they made their own in-house one that is comparative so 
Man, I'm saying A tier, but I might jump it up to S tier. We'll see how flooded S tier gets. Um, but for net, actually, no, I'm gonna put an S tier. I'm gonna put Arcturus in S tier. They're a great price. You get a lot for what you buy. Uh, none of their guns have broken on me. The only issue I've had with Arcturus is uh, their hop up on the PP19, but that was like a $5 fix of just getting a new bucking and a uh, nub. So like, yeah. Arcturus is pretty great. I uh, I do love them. Ares, this is going to be controversial because a lot of people have not had good experiences with Ares, but I've owned, let's see, two SCARs. I had the SCAR SC, the SCAR L. I had their 308. I had their Jack series. All of them have been very good performance. What holds Ares back is their proprietary uh, MOSFET where you need a massive box that you can't seem to get. I bought one and it got stolen by customs, never got it. Um, I'm gonna put Ares in B tier for now. I'm actually gonna put it at the top of B tier cause I kind of want to put it, oh, there we go. Nope, come on. Move that there, that there. Yeah, I'm gonna put it at the top of B tier uh, for now because I've had what is that four four guns from Ares and all of them have worked flawlessly their fps is low they're all shooting at like 1.1 1.2 joules but their compression and hop-up system is like so fine-tuned that uh i have not had any issues with range or accuracy so we're gonna keep Ares there army armament i have not used asg they make the Evo. Yeah, I've only used the Evo. I've only used the Evo from ASG, the Scorpion Evo, and that thing was a powerhouse. Um, I think they're pretty much known for their Evo. Uh, so for that alone, I will put it at B tier. I'll put it at B tier. Avengers. Uh, yeah, I've only used their, their airsoft grenades, so I don't think I can put like accurately rank them. Beta project, haven't used. This, haven't used. Man, I haven't used as much as I thought I have. <laughs> but there's also a lot on this list. Bolt. Uh, Bolt is a good company that makes some good electric blowbacks, but I think other companies do it better. Um, My problem with Bolt is they require so much battery for that electric blowback, it's so strong and the battery just drains like nobody's business. And also the recoil kind of shakes it to pieces. Um, hmm. Yeah, I think I'll put Bolt at a solid C tier. I've only used one of their products. It was good. Uh, it just wasn't like keepers worthy. Classic Army. Another good beginner brand that I'll put at. No, okay, now let's think. When I put Classic Army above six millimeter Pro Shop, and would I put it on par with ASG and Ares? I don't think I can. I've had issues with Classic Armies. Like they're good beginner guns, but I think they're better beginner guns than six meter Pro Shop. So I'll put it at the beginning of C tier. Um, their MOSFETs are fine. Uh, I and my friend have had problems with their motors, like the motor connects just breaking off. So that makes me hesitant on putting it higher. But I think for the price and for what you get, it's good if you're starting off airsoft, but there are definitely better options. Um, but they've just been around for a long time. So I feel confident putting it at C tier. Frostman, I have only used their pellet guns and air pistols, so I will not rank this for airsoft. Cybergun. Cybergun is an OEM, I thought. They just get like, do they make their own in-house stuff? I actually don't know. So what I'm, what I'm trying to discuss in my head is there's OEMs and then there's manufacturers. OEMs kind of just get the licensing to make stuff and then they send it to somewhere else to uh build it so the thing the problem with oems is that 
you buy one product from them and it could be totally different manufacturer wise from another product you buy from them i can't remember but i have used cyberguns products uh their scar series is kind of like your go-to for scars um it's either cybergun or vfc for me potential or at this point uh but if they are the manufacturer of what they make then i would put them at a solid b tier it's well manufactured uh yeah i think they're an oem actually because it's the cybergun vfc scar or a cybergun bolt scar well we'll think of that later we'll leave them at b tier uh if you're getting a scar it's going to be licensed by cybergun if you're getting trademarks on it um i use their tp9 tp9 is great um and yeah sima sima we're gonna put sima at a tier uh i think other companies beat out sima in the in the sense of performance wise but longevity their ak's and their m4s just kind of last forever and it's kind of like one of those bases that you know the base is gonna last and then you can add upgrades later on and uh they have like you can see kind of in this they have the platinum standard sport lpaeg uh they kind of hit every mark across the board um i wasn't too happy with their mp5 that i bought uh but that's just because at this point i was using hpa and guns with intense mosfets but it's a solid gun and i think they deserve some respect by putting them in a tier just for how long they've been in the game uh so yeah i feel confident leaving them there d boys haven't used double eagle uh double eagle is actually a tier for me uh to be honest this might be controversial i'll put them above sema actually no i take that back but they hit the game in AEGs and gas blowbacks. Uh, specifically for what puts them in A tier for me is their gas blowbacks. Uh, they kind of take the Marui spec and make it affordable for people in the States. Um, and they're well built. Uh, they do cut some corners to make it that cheap, but you can literally take your Marui parts and just put them in the double eagles and a lot of these higher end guns that you see that you're like man that price is a little too much for me if you just look to double eagle they probably have made that uh without like trademarks and stuff um and got the cost down for you and it works almost just as good so i will put double eagle there die tack uh have not used enc enc is going a tier for me enc is a chinese company eastern crane um you can find them on websites like taiwan gun uh the first m110 that i got uh was an enc one and basically they're the same thing as like double eagle where they take these name brand uh airsoft guns and they make them cheaper by like not having full license trademarks and stuff like that but the enc that i used was an absolute laser the compression was amazing the gears were amazing the shimming was done so right it was quiet snappy and it just it just felt great i was utterly surprised about it and i'm sad i wasn't doing reviews when i used it because that would have gotten such a great review uh by me E and L are basically in partner with Arcturus. Uh, so it feels weird putting them at S tier, but they're kind of a subsidiary to Arcturus. Um, I've only used one of their products, but seeing them at like SHOT Show and things like that, I'm pretty sure Arcturus and E and L go hand in hand. I'll move them down to A tier because Arcturus is a more well-known brand. But when don't sleep on E and L, especially if you like Arcturus and uh, check them out right now. The only e &L I have is their new uh, limited edition uh, T191 DPS dual pressured system. Uh, and a review is coming up on that soon. I might be using that for this new event and have a lot of gameplay with it. Um, so yeah, expect a review on that. Uh, there are some faults with it. So 
I'll put it at A, at a tier, uh, but I do enjoy e and L. Echo One Jag, uh, I'll put them at B tier, flat out. Uh, I think they make some good guns, uh, but it's a very niche of what they make good. Uh, you probably know Jag Arms for their scatter gun, um, which is basically the only way I've used them. So from my experience, uh, they make cool shotguns, but a lot of companies have just taken that design and gone with it that do it a little bit better. Um, so I will put Jag at B tier just because I haven't used a lot of them. Um, and the, what I've done, what I have used is just their shotguns. Elite Force Umarex. Uh, this is another iffy one because I'm pretty sure they are also an OEM. They work with Cybergun, they work with VFC. Um, but their 416 is like one of my favorite guns. Uh, but these also hit a niche aspect. So let's let's think of a rule set for what needs to be S tier. They have to hit a wide variety. They have to make good products. You have to get a bang for your buck. Thinking of all that, is this S tier? I would say no, because the price is stupid expensive. It's like $500 for their 416. They did come out with their CQB and Sport lines, but I have not used those. And even with their 416s, the performance isn't great out of the box. Uh, you do have to put some upgrades in it. But the build quality is really good, so I will probably leave it at A tier and kind of rethink this. Uh... I would probably put Echo One above E and C. I'd probably put E and L. No, I'd probably put E and C above E and L. And I think I like that right there. EMG. Uh, I don't know how to rank EMG because they are definitely an OEM. Uh, they work with a bunch of other companies to produce products. So you never know what you're going to get. Um, but they make some really cool airsoft guns because of that. Uh, EMG stands for Evike Manufacturing Group. Um, it's basically just Evike's company, like tech company, uh, and they work with other stuff like the new Daniel Defense Mark 18, both the AG and the gas blowback. Is EMG working with SEMA, uh, EMG working with Double Eagle to make the Noveskis, EMG working with uh, other companies to do that so I will put them at a tier because they get the cool guns that you want in your hands and made but I can't put them at S tier because you don't know who's manufacturing the gun. it could be so many other people manufacturing the gun uh, when they do release new products if that makes any sense it's like, oh man, this thing looks really great, but it's actually just a SEMA standard with the licensings sent out by EMG. Eh. Or I really like this, but it's just uh, an Ares basic with the EMG licensings. That's again, the price will get you. All this stuff is pretty expensive. Uh, so I will leave them at A tier just for the fact that those airsoft guns that you like that you see here that's like really cool they they get them and they get them made uh, but the unsurety of the quality is uh what's gonna drop them down g and g you already know that's going in s tier for me g and g is one of my favorite companies uh where g and g shines is they don't go for the licenses they make their own concept guns. They might take like some inspiration here and there, but that keeps the cost down. And they are innovative out the wazoo. That's uh, yeah, you're gonna hear some weird terms from me. <laughs> uh, they are innovative. They um, they do so many like new things that are well. Uh, let's let's think of their SGR556. They made a split gearbox with an optical sensor that has a functioning empty mag detection that works with any mag most companies that make an empty mag detection you have to use their own proprietary mags to do so uh but gng &G found a way to do it better and it works that gun is like it's it's for sale right now on hop up i don't know how long i'm gonna keep it up for sale 
I might take it down because I do need a reliable AEG to keep in the arsenal, and this is one of them. But they've done that. They're doing their lever action, which is super cool. Uh, they think about the player and how the player wants to upgrade it in the future. Like with the lever action, they're having the fill valve on the stock bottom part, on the bottom part of the hand. So you can easily add an HPA tab for it because they know people are going to want an HPA. It takes M4 AEG mags. Their shotgun takes AEG mags and has a massive gas reservoir to uh, charge it. Uh, they just do so many cool things. Build quality is great. They've kind of perfected polymer and airsoft guns. It's strong, reliable, and yeah, I, I just have lots of good things to say about G&G. GMP, haven't really used. Golden Eagle, haven't really used. ICS, <clears throat> they are the, in my opinion, they're kind of like the originators of the split gearbox for AGs. Um, I like their split gearbox design. I just haven't had too many good, like perfect experiences with ICS. I think they get a solid B tier from me. Um, they have some pretty good build qualities. The price though is pretty high uh, for ICS guns and they've kind of stopped coming out with stuff. Wait, ICS, ICS, ICS. They made the, basically the Masada. They made the, uh... I gotta think real quick. I gotta think what ICS makes actually. I'm forgetting, I'm blanking on it. Let me see if I see another brand. Okay, yeah, I was a little confused. It's because uh, EMG, again, OEM'd a ICS product, their uh, Mark 18 that has the ICS split gearbox in it. But yeah, mm, there is some problems with theirs. You can see way back on the channel, one of my reviews of the uh, Mark 18 ICS. It has a weird instance of when you switch between full auto and safe, it'll double feed real quick. Uh, they have a, a blowback system that I think hasn't been perfected, um, but it is a solid product still. So I'd put out a good B tier. JG Works haven't used King Arms Elite Force. I'm pretty sure I I think that it was at the UK version of Elite Force. Oh no! If so, I guess it goes with uh, the normal Elite Force, and all of what I said for that applies. Uh, Crytek, Chris Vector, unpopular opinion. I think this is a B tier. I don't think Crytek has done anything new in the last like 10 years. They've just kind of been re-releasing their 10 years is a lot. I don't think it's been actually 10 years. It's probably less, uh, but they're, they're mid, they're mid, they're mid, they're mid, they're mid. Their MOSFET is mid. Their build quality is good. It's great actually. Uh, but their performance is mid and you're basically paying a lot of money for a, a name. Uh, their new gas blowback kind of flopped in performance. Um, their vectors are not the best on the market and they're so proprietary. They're kind of hard to upgrade in any uh, way, shape or form. Um, their M4s are built really well. Uh, they're pretty reliable, but they just don't have the performance of a modern day airsoft gun. So I'm giving them a B. I think they've earned the respect to be higher than a C, um, but price versus performance, mid. KWA, up here, baby. KWA is, again, one of my favorite uh, brands, their electric recoil guns are amazing. Their gas blowbacks, the LM4 is kind of like the try and true, uh, M4 here in the U S because no one can really get their hands on Tokyo Marui's. Uh, but all these other companies are starting to get into the gas blowback game, realizing that gas is, I couldn't rhyme gas mass class gas is class. There we go. We're going to make that get big we'll make t-shirts that just say gas is class the classy ones use the gas blowbacks uh kwa though again uh i've owned a few of their products i had the, i have their uh t10 i had their t6 
I have their TK45, um, all electric recoil, probably some of the best electric recoil in the market, better than Tokyo Marui, better than Bolt. Uh, it is a crisp, smooth. Uh, they listen to their player base. They made their new series easier to add gate titans to it, uh, which I don't even think you need. Um, they make some really good trigger contacts that don't burn out and can have them handle 11 ones uh accuracy all that the price is a little bit up there but in this sense i think the premium is worth it because the price versus performance is even for me uh and yeah i think they're great lct um lct i think is overrated uh build quality is great if you're into ak's as you can tell i'm not into ak's lct is probably like one of your go-to's but the price is super expensive so i kind of put it on par with crytac uh they have released or they are releasing some new stuff with the mosfets but for such a while you're paying like five six hundred dollars for a gun without a mosfet that you're just going to strip add your own parts to and go and play with so we'll see what their new stuff is like uh but for now i think they're mid matrix i'm putting them at c tier because uh i think they're a great beginner brand again uh they have a lot of stuff that is cheap in price uh for me the c tier is kind of like like the beginner class if you're just or not an airsoft you should look towards a classic army six minute pro shop I actually, I want to say you should look for a bolt. You know what? I'm going to drop bolt. I'm going to do it. I'm going to drop bolt. Uh, because they're priced expensive and I went on my whole thing about that. But Matrix, I think, is a good brand to start off with. Um, their, what is it? UTR45. Matrix in partnership with Double Eagle. UTR45. One of the best bang for your bucks. I think it is the best bang for your bucks starting off. You're going to have to deal with proprietary mags, but the you get like a MOSFET that has so much uh, adjustability. Uh, you have great trigger response. You have good battery life. You have a nice build quality. Um, yeah, I think this is the one of the perfect beginner guns to get or beginner brands to look at. Uh, bah, 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 modify have not used, uh, have not used NPOAG, have not used this one. Poseidon haven't used, I see Airsoft GI is carrying Poseidon, so if any of you bought some Poseidon products, let me know. Maybe I'll check it out. Prometheus Lalex. They don't really make guns, not do they? They kind of just make upgrade parts. I think this deserves to be on a different tier list. So we'll kind of just put it here, but here I'll give my opinion on Prometheus Lilacs. Uh, they make great, they make great parts, great parts. They're uh, a little pricey, but um, they do make one of the largest variety of upgrade parts for both AEGs and actually I think it's just AEGs. No, and gas blowbacks. Um, yeah. Uh, I used their buckings for so long. I used their barrels for so long. Now I'm starting to dive into stuff that are easier to get in the US, like uh, uh, Unicorn. Uh, I think Unicorn's good. Um, but uh, yeah, I just don't think that they deserve to be on this tier list because we're talking mainly about airsoft guns and not parts. PTS would fall in the same category, but they do have like a few airsoft guns floating around um let's see what do pts have in the category they have the masada that i use they have the zevcore ag that i use um both good products but i think i'm getting more by i'll put them at b tier uh please in the comments let me talk me up or down from any of these choices but for now i think i'm getting biased on the how, what parts i use from pts i love their iron sights i love their grips and stuff like that but airsoft gun wise i love the masada and i had to sell it because i was out of a job but i i regret getting that but they seem to have stepped back away and you can't find parts for it anymore so 
I'm gonna leave PTS at B tier. This may be my bias right now. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments. Raptor, TWI, have not used. ST, have not used. Secular Arms, have not used. Is this supposed to be? No, Specular Arms is on the list. So yeah, haven't used. Haven't used this. Six hour. Again, they are an OEM in the Airsoft game because they go from I'm pretty sure their two biggest things are VFC Elite Force and yeah so I don't think I can put SIG on here I will talk about SIG when I talk about VFC does that work for everybody we will see Snow Wolf, I haven't used SOCOM gear, I haven't used. Oh, they're also SOCOM gear. See, also the other uh, manufacturer for the Barrett. Spec the arms, they're making a comeback. I'll put them at B for now. Uh, let's take a brief second to rework B tier. Aries, I think, is good. A and K, I think, is good. But I would put. Oh, gosh, we gotta. I wish I could just drag and move these. Oh, I can. I'm dumb. I'll put Spec and Arms there, ICS there, I'll put NK there, ASG there, Cybergun here, Echo One's here, ICS. Yeah. Uh, but Spec and Arms, they are making a comeback. They are getting in with the modern times and adding good MOSFETs. They're partnering with Gate for a lot of their MOSFETs. Their price isn't that expensive and their newer stuff is coming with goodie bags. They're in like grips, rail segments, extra mags, things like that. Um, so I think they are proving themselves and I'd like to see what they come up more, but I'm putting them at a solid B tier uh, price versus performance and yeah. I think I think Specna Arms is making a comeback. I think you shouldn't sleep on Specna Arms. And if you're looking for a beginner gun, um, look at the price range for these. If anything from Ares or Specna Arms uh, rivals the price, then look a little further into it, and you might get yourself a good deal by going with these two. SCR haven't used. Swiss Army hasn't used. Sistema haven't used. Tipman haven't used Tokyo Marui. Ha ha. Who am I going to piss off with this opinion? Who am I going to piss off with this opinion? It's C tier. Tokyo Marui. <coughs> Maybe my voice cracking is a sign that I'm making a wrong decision. But I think Tokyo Marui is overrated. Um, their price is expensive. Here in the US, they're hard to get. The performance is not great because they're, they are a primarily, or they are the Japan manufacturer where their jewel limit is low. Uh, so to get them here in the States, they're low. Um, let me give you a little story about Tokyo Marui. I am a big fan of the Scar H. Uh, I wanted myself the Tokyo Marui Scar H. Uh, but to get it up on par, for one, the Tokyo Marui Scar H cost about $630. Then from there, I was like, hey, I want to put a MOSFET in it. Nice, that's another $200. Uh, okay, now I got a new MOSFET in it. I want a better motor because this thing just goes ch -ch 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 -ch. Get a better motor uh, for a snappier trigger response and a better cycle rate. Nice. That's only another $30. But because I got another motor, you're going to want to upgrade the gears. Well, that's another $80. Okay, I upgrade the gears. Well, to upgrade the gears now to get the compression right, you're going to want a new piston and piston head. Another $50. Okay, did all that. Now what? Well, you did all that. You're going to want a new barrel and bucking. Okay, another $80. Okay, did all that. Now am I done? No, because you upgrade the gears. Uh, oh, you're gonna want a new spring too to get that FPS up from that like 0.9 joule or not, or from that 0.9 joules to like 1.3, 1.4, 1.5. Because I want to take this outdoors. Well, you upgrade the spring. That's when you get to the piston head and everything. Did all that. 
Well, now the gearbox is going to break because you upgraded the spring, so you need to upgrade the gearbox. Okay, another $70, $80. Fine, am I done now? Yeah, you're done now. But at that point, you're like twelve, thirteen hundred dollars $1,300 in to this project just to get a Tokyo Marui AEG working here in the United States uh, at a competitive level. Um, so, yeah. I think they've been around way too long to not even consider MOSFETs in their, their systems yet. But, uh, yeah. That's my rant on Tokyo Marui. C tier. Uh... They, they started they started the whole thing it's it's you know you hear if something's tm standard they made the standard for airsoft uh, but they kind of just took that and just said we're done we don't need to do anything else i haven't used this one umbrella armory haven't used but i heard that they're good so someone someone talk where i should put umbrella armory in the comments uh vulcan haven't used bfc bfc I'm thinking B tier for VFC. They are expensive. Actually, ooh. I gotta think of this. I started using VFC when I already had a lot of parts to just upgrade my stuff out of the box. They're MCX. Let's go with that. I let me remember my 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 time with the MCX. Their MCX did not perform the way I wanted to out of the box for five hundred dollars four or five hundred dollars so i upgraded the gears we're good uh mpx i bought it with a gate titan already in it used it for a little bit switched to a lower spring and the gears broke that's gonna knock it down some put hpa units in there uh and then after a while the upper and lower started wobbling Gotta knock some stuff down from that too. Uh, they're 416. Didn't perform as well as I wanted to out of the box, but it's okay because I was gonna HP it anyways. HP it, it worked flawlessly until I ended up selling it later down the road. I think I'm just biased with VFC. I want to put it at B tier. I want to put it at B tier because I like all the guns they make. Oh wait, we didn't even thought, think about gas blowbacks. That might bring up some points. That might bring it up some points. The first round of gas blowbacks didn't do too well, but they listened to the community and improved them. They started making polymer V mags. They're now making CO2 mags. They upgrade their internals. Hmm. 416. I like that. MCX Spear. We also got to bring APFG into this because it's basically just VFC. That brings it up. Okay. Okay. I was a little torn up putting it at C tier, but I think I talked myself up to a B tier. Their AEGs do need some work. Their build quality is pretty good but they do present some issues a little further down the road and their tolerances and a little bit of wobble. But their gas blowbacks, their BCM, SIG, uh, H and K, SIG. <laughs> you know I love SIG, uh, but I, I do like the gas blowbacks. I currently own two. Currently own two of them and a lot of other people do like VFC. You can get a lot of cool parts for them. Make them look however much you want to look, make them look. Uh, performance is good. Not really getting impasses out of the box with some of their newer stuff, but it's okay. Yeah, I think if you're looking for VFC as an AG, I think it's a good platform to find the cool gun that you want and then upgrade it yourself. So that brings it down from an A. Gas blowbacks, all of theirs have done pretty good for me out of the box except for my bcm i think that one was a little bit of a lemon in a sense not a terrible lemon but a little bit of a lemon um but the rattler is uh doing phenomenal um and yeah i think if you're looking for gas blowbacks uh here in the states i think vfc and emg with their cmo ones are kind of your go-to you're not really finding too many lm4s these days uh so 
Yeah. B tier. We tech. C tier. That was the other company that had a license for the scar. We tech. Um, I haven't really used their AGs. Their gas blowbacks are kind of mid. They're kind of mid. They're a nice, uh, I think if you're getting into gas, actually, if I say anyone's getting into gas blowbacks, I don't think you should go with cheap option because for one, it's going to be difficult to tech and find the issues with. Uh, but there is a scar project that I want that's only compatible with the Wii tech, which is, it's going to be fun. Um, but I think they do things average. I think you're going to get like an average airsoft gun, nothing special, but nothing terrible. Uh, so I think they, they deserve their C tier spot with WE. Well, I haven't used, honestly thought well was the full name of WE. Z shot. Haven't used action army. I actually haven't used aim top. Why is ENC back on this list? I'm not lying, right? Yeah, ENC's on here twice. Galaxy, Maple Leaf. They are some of the best for gas blowback parts. Not even gas blowback parts, but for like buckings, barrels. Uh, they started getting into gas blowbacks. Uh, once again, I'm going to have to continue my thing. If anyone's used their actual airsoft gun products, let me know. I've only used them for parts, so I'll put them in the same category that I put. Uh, what was the other one that I said I only bought parts from? I don't know, but I'll put them there because I can't actually rank their airsoft guns because I haven't used them. Ooh, we're starting to get into a spot where I haven't used most of the stuff. So let me just cut the video and we'll get back to where I get the review stuff again. Okay, we're back with the rest of the stuff that I have used. Man, this uh, this section is it's a little big, uh, but there's a lot of brands on here. Silverback. I've only used their SRS, and that was one of the best snipers I've used out of the box. So I'll put them at a solid B tier, and someone can talk me into their others. So actually, I do know about their bullpup ones, and that kind of took a, a tumble. Uh, during SHOT Show, they released a newer version of it that uh, seemed to fix a lot of the issues. So you gotta give them points for listening to their fan base. But I will keep them at B tier because their SRS is one of the best sniper rifles I use. The price is high, but I think it's worth the price for what you're getting. Uh, Angry Gun, I have not actually used, but I did want to talk about them. Um, I use a lot of their upgrade parts. Uh, and it's a lot more cosmetic stuff, but the build quality is really well. And uh, I think if you're looking for rails, uh, stocks, receivers, stuff like that. Angry guns or suppressors too, uh, with tracer units. Angry guns uh, is a good go-to. Unless I'm getting them mixed up with angry customs, I might actually be. But yeah, we'll put them in this category. AW customs. I just use their pistols, and can't really speak much on their pistols. Uh, it worked. I used it. It's a pistol. Eh. We'll put it C. Glock. Glock can't be rated because they fall in the same category as Six Hour, where they're OEM by. Oh, that reminds me. Elite Force. Oh, yeah, okay, I put it. Yeah. Elite Force is one of the main OEMs of the Glock. Where is Lancer Tactical? What? I'm just noticing this. Lancer is not on this list. That's weird. I don't know why I forgot about it. So you GHK gas blowbacks. Um, I'll give my thoughts on Lancer actually first. Lancer I think belongs in. Ooh, let's piss off some people. A tier. I think Lancer belongs in A tier. Um, I think they are. Their Gen two and threes are kind of gonna be. Zion Arms also isn't on this list. 
they're basically working with Lancer in some way. Uh, I think it's the same manufacturer, like a uh, warehouse manufacturer production line. Uh, Lancer Tacticals Ion Arms are probably going to be their G Lancer Tacticals Gen 2 and 3, mostly their Gen 3s. And Zion Arms are going to be your best beginner guns. They compete with high end guns for the price of like two to three hundred dollars. Uh, if I was starting out airsoft, I kind of did start off airsoft this way, but I would start with a Lance Tactical Giant Zion Arms to see if I uh, want to stick with the sport. You're not going to spend too much money and you're going to get something that's going to put you right there and being competitive. Uh, I would put Lance Tactical Zion Arms at A tier. Uh, GHK haven't used, but I know I know I got my gas bullback uh, peeps in the description that will speak on GHK and if they're good or not. So I will let them do that. And yeah, just left this here so we could talk about it. Wolverine Airsoft. I'm not biased. S tier. Wait, Polestar is not on here. Wow. Someone needs to update this tier list. Polar Star, I would put at honestly. Well, they don't really make. Do they make their own dedicated? No, they don't. I'd put Polar Star at A tier. I think it's either Wolverine or Polar Star. That's going to be your options for HPA. Uh, Polar Star, because they don't make their own dedicated gun for it, they're going to get some tolerances from putting a foreign object into a foreign body. Um, and that will cause some issues down the road. I've had so many Polar Star builds. Literally the only one that worked first try was the 416. Everything else took a lot of tweaking to get working. Wolverine, on the other hand, took that old concept of we're just going to be an HPA company and they made a HPA unit and a body dedicated to that HPA unit. So, you know, it's all CNC machined. The tolerances are minuscule. Uh, it's going to fit, it's going to work, it's going to shoot accurate. And I have a Wolverine that I have done absolutely nothing to. It is a laser out of the box and I wouldn't change anything about it. It's been the best HPA experience of my life. And I say, if you're getting into HPA, just go ahead and pick yourself up an MTW and you will love it. Uh, one of my buddies, Image, uh, he went through this whole process of making a Kythera build for one of his guns that ended up axing itself. Uh, so then he bought a Wolverine and he said, I am very mad that I didn't just buy this out, uh, straight up. I would have saved a lot of money and a lot of headache because I have done absolutely nothing to this and it just works right out of the box. So Wolverine go to, they're also becoming innovative. They finally released in the M110, not the M110, the 308 caliber and their gen 12 shotgun you know i'm gonna have that in my hands i want it so badly <sighs> wolverine if you're seeing this video i'm not biased you just you just have sold me on such a good product give me that give me that shotgun please i will do anything for it anything <laughs> uh and then we have Novridge. Navridge voice cracking again, man. Come on. Navridge is a bit iffy for me because from my understanding of Navridge is they're also just an OEM that just uh, puts their name on other manufacturer stuff. It's not in-house manufacturing. Uh, but if you're a sniper, I feel like everyone uses a Navridge sniper at some point. I have not. I have not used any Novridge products, so I will be unfamiliar with this brand in the sense of use. Please, in the comments, talk me up or down on Novridge, and we will see. But that is everything in this tier list. Uh, we have gone through it. Let's see if when we see when we look at this, if um, can I just no? Let's see if this still holds up. Uh, I will actually switch Arcturus and GNG. I think GNG is the best of them. I'll switch KW and Arcturus too. I'll switch. Hmm. Let's think. I think GNG covers more facets than Wolverine. I think KW covers more, because Wolverine's just an HPA company. So I'll, I'll leave Wolverine there. 
granted, everything in S tier I have a strong passion for. So these are all good. If you're looking for something without licensing, something that's newer, that looks unique, GNG is your boy. KWA, if you're looking for that electric recoil and that performance, KWA is your boy. Also got some gas blowbacks in there. If you're looking for something around the AK route, but also could be unique, and you don't want to spend a fortune on the LCT, Arcturus your boy. If you're looking to get into HPA, Wolverine's your boy. Uh, except for AKs, they don't have any HPA AKs as of now. I heard there's there's rumors that they 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 keep rumoring that they might make one someday. Get the Gen 12 out first. Get get the Gen 12 out first, then go to the AKs. Um, A tier, SEMA, tried and true, reliable, performance. Eh, I think they get outperformed by some brands, but reliability, build quality, good. Double Eagle. They get you those Tokyo Brewery S guns cheaper. Lead Force Humorex. Pretty sure they're an OEM. Not an OEM. Yeah, a little torn on that. Uh, King Arms. I think this is the UK version of Elite Force. King Arms Eagle Force. Get this out of here. I have no clue who they are. ENC. I think they're slept on. I think you should look on Taiwan Gun. Look at some of their stuff. Uh, the gun that I'm talking about is called the ENC 202. I think it's really good. EMG is an OEM, so I think by these standards, we should probably drop EMG out of this ranking because they don't really make anything in house. Uh, ENL. You know, I have only one of their products. It's doing well for me. Review on that soon. Um, unboxing gonna be up for uh channel members so if you want to see me unbox this and put it together a little bit check that out and yeah everything else i went on such long rants about but that's our that's our top two our s and a tier explained uh you can look back in the video or you watch the video all the way through to which i say subscribe uh but yeah I can't really speak too much on all these. I think these are all good placements uh, for things. And yeah. I'm happy with this list. I'm happy with this list. Let me know if you're happy with my list too, or if I need to change it in the description. Uh, but yeah, for that, I would like to say stay safe, have fun, play airsoft. Look forward for some new content. We're going to a Milsim this weekend and footage should hopefully be uploaded next week if I'm on top of my game. Uh, after that, uh, Battle for Six Flags. It's going to be a big event. Uh, we are going to be there too. Uh, just waiting on tickets to go sail. That will be in New Orleans. So it's a bit of a drive for all you East Coasters like myself. Uh, but luckily I made friends with someone who is willing to drive 16 hours to play airsoft so i am a lucky guy um and then thunderdome 5 we'll be at thunderdome 5 uh this coming august um we'll be on tan again so look forward to that and uh what else i think i'll put up a bigger announcement on the discord again if you're not in the discord join the discord i uh try and post there i haven't been posting too often there's things have been a little hectic but i will get back into that uh gray zone warfare has been eating some of my time too uh but i'll be at rats not this weekend maybe not next weekend but maybe next weekend uh if not then the weekend after uh, i want to do a video where i show off you all's loadouts in person so if you are at rats uh and i put out my announcement that will be there uh, join us over the lunch break to uh, go over your loadout and explain what you like to rock with when you play Airsoft. I think that's all the announcements out of the way. If you like what you see, hit that subscribe button, leave a comment. Those things help tremendously. Uh, and if you're able to afford it, hit that membership. Your monthly donations go towards us purchasing new Airsoft guns to review, go into these larger scale events to get that footage uh, and whatnot. And if you don't want to commit to a monthly subscription, hit that super thanks button. 
because you can donate what you want. Actually, I don't know how that works. I don't think it's a fixed rate. I think you can just donate what you want to donate. Uh, but all that out of the way, we're getting close to 2K subscribers, which is amazing. So definitely hit that subscribe button. Uh, but as I started before, stay safe, have fun, play Airsoft. And this is Tacked Up, signing out.